So I'm so excited to be here this afternoon with an absolute legend of British TV and theatre, the one and only Mr Steve McFadden. Steve, Hi. thank you ever so much for your time today. Pleasure. Glad to be um, here. So I've got to start by saying welcome to Birmingham. Yeah, it's lovely to be here. You've done Panto for the last nine or ten years or so. Yeah, yeah. But this is your first year, isn't it? First at Birmingham, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So are you looking forward to being here and at the Hippodrome? Yeah, I am very much so. I've, I've been in the audience as a punter for the last three years. So I know what the crowd's like, they're fantastic. Yeah. So, I, you know, I've, I've, I'm excited to be on stage and, you know, hear that crowd because I know yeah. how much they're up for the crack. And I've never felt so much um, at one with the audience as I, as I will when I come here. Because, yeah. you know, I feel like I've been out there with them. They really uh, get into it, don't they? Yeah, they love yeah, it, they yeah. love it. And was that to see Matt? Was yeah, yeah, Matt? to yeah. see Matt. So this year's show is going to be Dick Whittington. Mm. And so tell us a little bit about this villain you're going to be playing, King Rat. Uh, he's the baddie. <laughs> he's the king of the rats. <laughs> and he's from London. So i uh, fit the bill, I think. Um, <laughs> I've not had the script issued to me yet. So I'm yet to find out the character. Exactly what Bean's out. Yeah. Okay. But you did, we did get your first look at your costume today, yeah. didn't we? It's quite... Yeah, so you start piecing it together. Normally I get to the costume and think, oh... That's not going to work, or, yeah. you know. But I like the costume; it's good. Brilliant. And is Dark that the whole? Is that the whole get up? Or are you going to be having? Uh, gonna be um, uh, there'll be some more bits, I think. Yeah. Prosthetic whiskers or anything. Uh, like some that. something <laughs> like that. Yeah, I think something will go on around the head, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to lose this or grow it and make it bigger or. Um, but yeah. See how it comes together. It's not going to be that. It's not. Gonna, I'm not. They had a hat for me, but I've been the hat straight away. Oh, right. That's the only thing I'll try. <laughs> everything else is working. Brilliant. And how do, you t how do you approach your take on that character? You mentioned he's from London and whatnot, so are you going to be throwing shades of Phil in there? Is it going to be... Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, I think what I've worked out over the years, and it, it does take you a while, because, you know, the first time I, I ever did Panto, I just... I came out, I think, what, what am I doing? You know, what, I don't know... Do I just have to shout? What is it? You know, just have, is it just comedy? What... What is it? And then um, what happened was, before the, 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 the show went up, this is literally the first night, the first time I ever did it, I was outside sort of, you know, thinking about it all and trying to work out how to pitch it and exactly what, how to do it, really, because you have to learn. And um, I saw the crowd going in and kind of, you know, just didn't think about that at all. And then I went on, did the show, and then I saw the crowd coming out. And when I saw the difference between the crowd going in and the crowd coming out, I thought, that's what this is about. It's about giving them a good time and bringing to the, um, to the show whatever it is you've got to give them a good night. Yeah. So if you're a singer, you sing great. If you're a comedian, you make them laugh. Yeah. And I think the thing with um, my position is I've got to act. I've got to be a bit of myself and I've got to be a bit of the character that everybody knows. So it's an amalgam of those three things, really. It's a bit of Phil, a bit of Steve, and, a, and just having a good time, you know, so... Yeah. Now, you mentioned singing then. Now, yeah. I've heard from some of your previous pantos that you have surprised some audiences. That yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be singing yet. I'm, oh. I'm waiting to find out. Brilliant. Well, I've heard nothing about it. It'll be in the script. Yeah, yeah. It's not good singing, it's character <laughs> singing. But, you know, I give it a go. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not scared to... Uh, well, as I say, I've heard nothing but good things, so I look forward to it. <laughs> now, in terms of the style of performing, yeah. obviously, um, with EastEnders, it's, it's not only more dramatic and more serious than Panto, but from a production perspective, it's a lot more regimented and piecemeal, isn't it? Mm. So, as a performer, as an actor, it, is it quite liberating to be able to just go out there every night and just let loose for the evening and not quite as... Um, it EastEnders or any screen acting, well, not any screen acting, but most screen acting is quite detailed and fine, yeah. and the, the you know the little look can be all you need. You know, just the, the the smallest gesture can tell the story of that scene. But in Panto, that's not the case. You know, you've got to be big and bold and broad and colourful, and that's what I'm, that's what I, that's what the difference is, and that's what I'm going to do when I do this this one. Fantastic and. As per Panto, you're going to be doing two shows a day, so it's a, it's a pretty demanding run. Uh, how, do you, how are you going to be keeping up that energy and that momentum, and how do you keep it fresh for yourself? I don't, I don't think there's any choice, really. You just, you know, you hear the audience coming in, you get the half-hour call, 
you got the makeup going on, the, the costume, you know, you do. I mean, Barbara said to me uh, years ago, Dr. Footlights. I was like, well, Dr. Footlights? You oh, you know, you always feel better when you go on stage. And so you can not feel yourself, you're not feeling on top of the world, but you walk on stage and bosh, you suddenly, you transform, you know, whatever was wrong with you before, when you're on stage, it just it magically disappears. Fantastic. Um, and on a similar note, I think what surprises people, particularly people who perhaps don't go to Panto, um, particularly here in Birmingham at the Hippodrome, is the sheer scale of it nowadays. I mean, it is it has reached almost West End standards of production, hasn't it? It's big, lavish. Well, shows. it's better yeah, than that. Yeah, yeah. It's better than that because I've seen shows in the West End yeah. I've been disappointed with. Yeah. But every time I've come here, I've been blown away, and I still I'm looking at the stage thinking I just don't know how they do it, and I tell Matt. You know, don't you don't have to. I'm not asking you how they do it because it's it's just amazing and it's brilliant to sit out there with your kids in the audience and you're just going, oh my, how oh, the hell is that? And you know, someone goes upside down on a magic carpet, and you can't see a string or a hydraulic arm or any method of making it support itself. It's just Real genuine it's like magic. magic. Yeah, yeah just um, so you know, you've got fantastic production values here. You've got a great crowd. And you've got terrific actors and uh, performers, you know, whether they're singers, uh, dancers or comedians. It's just a coming together of three great elements. Yeah. So that's what it's makes it such a great it. show here. And it's always my favourite. Brilliant. And with it opening in December, it's coming at the end of a pretty big year for yourself. Yeah. Um, you've become a dad again. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, you've had some massive storylines in EastEnders. Obviously, you had that big emotional farewell to Barbara Windsor. Yeah. And you also picked up a lifetime achievement for your Yeah, it's been a good year, when you put it like that. <laughs> it's been already. busy. It's been busy, yeah. It should be slowing down, but it doesn't well, seem to be. Well, it? <laughs> it doesn't seem to be happening, no. So, is Panto a bit of an outlet at the end of the year for the year? Is it something you look forward to? Yeah, it's definitely, yeah, and, you know, it's a, it's a complete change. It, it's, you know, I come to a new place. I get to know a new bunch of people. It, it's just a complete break from what I do, you know, my nine to five job, really. And then, you know, I go back there and I go back to it and it's lovely to go back to because I've had a, a not a rest, but a, a complete change. So it, it's very healthy balance. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Well, just before we go, um, what can audiences who are coming to Dick Whittington in December or perhaps considering coming, what can they expect? In, with the show? I think, knowing Matt's in it, a lot of laughter, a lot of Mickey taking, um, knowing uh, Kudos and the Hippodrome, they can expect a, a great, powerful powerhouse of a production that will take your breath away. And hopefully I'll do my little bit where I'll be as bad as bad can be. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to it. Uh, Steve, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. Nice Thank you ever so much for your time again, and we look forward to seeing the show in December. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.